Hello, wonderful people. Welcome to Tuesday's live stream. Yay! <laughs> I'm looking forward to working with you today. I am done with the inks of the main version. No, this is not the main version. Never mind. This is the actually the naughty patch version. Um, uh, her nips are not there because, uh, of course, I can't do that on live stream. So um, I'll be putting them in at the end. Um, this is a cover for Swornfest 2022, um, and I'm working for Coffin Comics right now. Huge shout out to Coffin Comics for allowing me to live stream the process. They are so awesome to do that. Um, Rob, hello! Welcome to the stream! And so I am drawing Lady Death. So I finished the cover pencils and inks with you guys on previous live streams and now I am working on the coloring. So I sent off the final line art for flats last night. I got them back early this morning um, and I actually haven't had a chance to do any work on this today. So this is the start. You guys will see what the flats are like when I get them, um, what flats are. I will explain that too and kind of show you the process of how I take the flats, make any adjustments, you know. Uh, the person who does the flats is amazing and they are so fast and awesome, but sometimes, you know, how are they supposed to know what line I intended to be hair and what is background, you know, things like that. I usually have to go in and make some adjustments, not because they're wrong, but just because you know, I know what I intended for X item to be and I need it flatted in a different way. So I will be working on all of that with you guys and I'll show you what that looks like. Um, for now though, I want to stop and say hi to everybody who's joined in. Thank you all so much for joining in on the live stream. You were awesome. Ben Helsing, long time no see, Rob, Mr. E, Nader, Jeff, Jason, Fabrizio, Devin, uh, Keeman, Edson, Jeff Martin, <laughs> thank you Jeff, One Banana, hello and welcome everyone. Thank you so much for taking the time from your day to hang out with me like this. It's really appreciated. Um, you absolutely are not required to be here, <laughs> but the fact that you take some of your time to be here with me means a ton. It has rained a little bit today, so I am back in my my fuzzy bear hoodie, me and my fuzzy bear hoodie, say hello. <laughs> River Dragon, hello. All right, so before I start, to those of you who are on the live streams with me all the time, I'm sorry for the repetition, but when I'm working in digital colors, I use a Cintiq. So that is by Wacom, and it is, um, I use the 22 HD. It is a big monitor. Here you can see the back of it. It has levers on either side so I can make it more like an easel. I have a wireless keyboard because I use hotkeys and it comes with a stylus pen. So I can draw or color directly onto the monitor and that makes it easier for me because for all intents and purposes I'm a traditional artist. Digital is not really uh, something that I'm very comfortable in yet. Um, so there are tablets that you can use that are like to the side. For me, it's much easier to be right on top of what I'm doing. Phrasing. I just realized what I said. <laughs> Thank you, Edson. That's so kind. Juan, hello. Welcome to the stream. Been absent for a minute. Glad to be back. It's great to have you here, Van Helsing. Thank you for joining. <laughs> It's mandatory to be here, lol. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm gonna go over into Photoshop. So I don't have a dual monitor situation. Um, so I have your guys' chats running down one side. I am live streaming to Facebook and Twitch simultaneously. So all the chats are together in one little thread. Um, if I miss a comment from you, please feel free to post it again. I may not have seen it. Um, so anyway, I am going to now go into Photoshop, even though you guys can see it right now, my monitor is mostly on the camera situation. All right, here we go. Thank you, Yannick. 
<laughs> All right, so I'll zoom in a little bit so you guys can see the line art. Um, if you missed the inking stream, that one is on my Facebook or Twitch. You can watch it back if you want to. <laughs> yeah, it's the way my, my um, desk is set up. So Dan literally can't survive without two monitors. It's really frustrating for him to only have one whenever he's home. <laughs> um, our son Lore, also dual monitor and a laptop. I just honestly don't think I could fit it on my desk. And I have a 12 foot desk, so that's saying something. I'm always out of room. <laughs> Character reminds me of one from Dust Till Dawn. Cool. I tried to watch it. What little that was accomplished on stream. Hey. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, all right. So this is the uh, piece. The um, stained glass windows are pretty much a mirror image of one another. I did that intentionally because I'm going for a, you know, symmetrical situation. Um, and then the candles are not. They are different heights and all of that stuff. Um, so here is the, the final inks. I don't honestly know where my signature is going to go. This is very typical for me. I draw myself into not having any room to sign it. Um, but here are the flats. So um, there are certain things that I didn't intend to all be the same color. So I'm going to go in now and start fixing the flats. And again, the flatter did an amazing job. I have zero complaints. There's just certain things that I set up differently for myself. And then I'll start working on the actual color scheme. So these colors are only there for the intention that they are different from the color next to it. It doesn't actually matter uh, what color the flatter chooses. It could be fluorescent green for all I care. Um, all I need is for them to be different so I can select everything separately. Um, so I'm going to go in now and like this part right here, see this whole section uh, is actually part of the stained glass window. So I want to make that a different color. It doesn't matter what color it is, we're just going to grab this orange. So I need to go in and actually change all of this to being a different color. So sorry, you guys are going to be with me for some of the tedious work that is digitally coloring a piece. Yeah, Mike, um, the flats are at least in comics. Uh, some people do flat their own work for sure, but um, many, many colorists uh, outsource that. And what's really handy for me anyway is the, the person that does my flats or the two people that do my flats live on the other side of the world. So I can send it off before I go to bed and I'll have the flats back by my morning, which is glorious. <laughs> I, will, I will always try to make sure that whoever does my flats is on a completely opposite schedule from me because that really, that really works out nicely. <laughs> You know, Fabrizio, I haven't gotten there yet on what colors are going to be used in the stained glass. Those are excellent questions I currently have myself as well. For some of these things, really what has to happen is I need to see what it all looks like. And sometimes you, you can't even decide some of these things until you, you see how it all meshes together with everything else on the piece. Like, I learned that when I started coloring my own work. So when I was, you know, a penciler only, and I would send off, um, send off my, my line art to be colored, I would send all of these suggestions of like, okay, so this needs to be that color. And I would put notes all over the piece of what colors I wanted everything to be. Now that I'm actually coloring my own work, I don't think ahead as far. Um, I'm mostly just focusing on making sure that the art itself is as good as I can get it because a lot of those things I have learned and I feel very repentant as a penciler now um, that I did tell the colorists what color everything should it should be. Maybe it helped. 
but maybe it was a giant pain in the ass for the colorist because they might try X color, which happens to me now. I'll try a color and be like, that looks terrible. That ruins the entire piece. I'm going to change it, you know? So that's something I feel kind of sorry for how, what I was like as a penciler, sending things off for color. <laughs> I, I wish I could, I have already gone and apologized to all the colorists that have done colors for me and told them I'm so sorry I was such a pain in the ass. <laughs> they know that I am repentant. Good evening, Philip. <laughs> Find out more about the universe. Ah, oh, that's so awesome. You can make Lady Death a blue alien in the flats. It can always be changed. That's right. Okay, so I'm turning off my line art so that I can see if I missed anything. No. Okay. So I will never be using this orange color. So if anybody is having thoughts and concerns, why is my Photoshop crashing? What's happening? If anyone has any thoughts or concerns, about the colors that I happen to be using. Don't. Just, just trust. It is part of the process. This is not good though. Uh, I'm going to close the file and try opening it again. And hopefully it's going to work. Yes. Okay. My goodness. Math. Hello. Welcome to the stream. Okay, so here it's open, so I'm going to go ahead and close that little gap right there. What? Close that gap. Hopefully this doesn't make anyone sick. <laughs> that would be most unfortunate. Okay, so now I just need to see my lines all the way up to the top. Letitia, hello, welcome to the stream. Steph, hi. Ulysses, hello, hello. Yeah, it's my fuzzy bear jacket. Thank you for noticing. tiny gap right there and right there. Now I should be able to fill these in without any issue. <laughs> yeah, today is actually a little bit chilly stuff, so I'm really happy about that. I am not complaining at all. I feel so much more myself when I'm able to wear my warm, fuzzy clothes. Okay, now I'm going to turn off the line art and just make sure that I went to the edge on all of this stuff. Otherwise, I'll start filling in places of orange that I don't actually want to be orange. Okay, perfect. 
and I'm using a uh, pen like a pencil tool so it's it has no aliasing there is no soft edge to this it is literally chunky pixel pixels um, and so then I'll be able to have really clean selections and that is super important when you're doing flats and you're doing the preparation for color. What these flats are is they're essentially pre-selection areas so that I can get a clean selection of all the different elements in the cover without having to go reselect it every time. I can just click on that layer and then I have that whole area, you know, like her hair for instance. I'll have all of her hair grabbed in one shot, you know. So that's what flats are for and it speeds up the process like you wouldn't believe. So that's why um, you don't want to have any kind of soft brush or any aliasing, any kind of smoothing on your brushes when you're doing flats is like the worst idea. You've basically negated flats for yourself. So I had to learn really quickly um, one time I had, I got the flats and I forgot to take the DPI down for like the size of the image. And so I resized the image and ruined my flats. Um, so you don't want to do that either. Like have it ready to where you don't need to change your line art. You don't need to do any kind of adjustments. Just have it at the size you plan on finishing it at. And for me, I do 400 DPI. 300 is really all you need for print. Um, I do 400 because a lot of times uh, banners will get made with my work or whatever, so I always submit 400 DPI. That could be ridiculous and unnecessary. It probably is, but that's how I roll. So, you know, I'm just gonna carry on being ridiculous and unnecessary. <laughs> I didn't know that the pencil was better than a brush for that. Yeah, well, all you want, Mike, is to make sure that here, I'm going to make the brush really, really big so you can see. Um, there's, no, that doesn't help. Okay, let's see. I'm going to actually just zoom in a ton. And then you'll be able to see it's all chunky pixels. There's no, there's no smoothness. There's no, um, what, what could I call that? There's no um, aliasing. There's nothing to smooth or soften the line. And so you're never going to see these flats. They don't, they're not part of the final cover. They're not anything besides part of the process. And so this way you'll be able to get really clean selections. Let's make this a black color. And see, now you can see it. There's no fading. It's all just chonky AF and that's really what you want in this situation. So I'm just going to undo that. Ah, oh, the glories of control Z. All right. I think so, Jason. Yes. Oh, okay. What the fan art is here with uh, some information in my wording so it seems like the it's the opposite solid edged lines with square stepping for angles is alias the soft pixels that fill out an edge to smooth an angled edge is anti-aliased my bad <laughs> oh rob thank you so much for posting about divinica on facebook you're an angel Oh, interesting, Edson. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Roger, Dodger, hello. Okay. So apparently you guys are seeing it more smoothly than it looks for me. So I keep trying to explain to you guys that it's, you know, chonky. It's my non-fancy way of saying it. Um, and apparently the video is smoothing it out but anyway just picture the fact that there's no smoothing in between it's a solid line in the breaks okay the other thing that i need is each one of these little levels in the 
the stained glass windows. So this is the stone framing, like the window frame. Um, I want each one of those to have a decent amount of like bevel and shade between them. So the, what that means is I need to make each one of these three um, window ledges, I guess, uh, a different color so that I can select them separately and give them proper shadow and highlight. Chonky is a technical term. I love that you speak my English, Mike. Thank you. <laughs> no, Mr. E, I can't take any credit for that. So I wrote it down. You know how when you guys remind me of something, I'll put it on a post-it. And I put it on a post-it to take care of it later. And then um, the other day, I'm looking at my desk and on the post-it, Dan wrote, done. <laughs> so sweet. When does the banging and the blowing begin? This is not that kind of stream, unfortunately. <laughs> Jeff Swan, hello. Yeah, I want it, well, I, not necessarily in the flats, but once I start coloring it, yeah, I really do want to have that, that depth in the, in the coloring. So we're going to do that real quick. And then I'm going to uh, do some adjustments in her hair. Oh, I have a scratch on my scanner, and I don't know if you guys can see that scratch. I am I always have to be on scratch watch because I have to take that scratch out of every goddamn cover I do. <laughs> it's so annoying. But one of these days, my scanner will break. I'm hoping for it, <laughs> and then I'll buy myself a new one. <laughs> Yes, I know. Dan is amazing. I'm so grateful. Chonky AF found in chapter 17 of Donglish. <laughs> James, hello. Welcome to the stream. So Joe and I, <clears throat> excuse me, JP Roth and I had another meet today to make sure we're all ready for the launch sale tomorrow. And we're discussing the sales and my goodness, you guys, if you haven't already signed up for emails from the Divinica shop, make sure that you do before tomorrow. She's gonna have a bunch of different coupons for different things. Um, and so you're gonna get to choose or you can do multiple orders. The way that a lot of uh, e-commerce websites work is that you can only use one coupon at a time. So like my website, for instance, uh, Dan and I have tried, we've looked into it and currently Shopify, to the best of my knowledge, at least last time we looked, they don't have the software that you can do multiple coupons. It's one coupon at a time. So that is how the Divinica shop is as well. We're not trying to be mean. It's just, that's the platform we have. Um, so just be aware that there are, are going to be multiple coupons for different collections. Um, so if you want to use multiple coupons, just um, it, it will have to be in separate orders. I apologize. However, um, JP Roth is the queen of very generous coupons. So um, make sure that you sign up to the email because we do have our very special launch sale happening tomorrow. Yay! Tomorrow, yes, tomorrow is gonna be a Divinica launch stream, absolutely. Um, as far as timing, it's probably gonna be around 5 p.m. Yes, what the fan art. How was King Sherlock's checkup? Oh, thank you for asking Philip. We're gonna actually take him in tomorrow. There were no vets in today, so our appointment is for tomorrow afternoon. Sherlock is actually doing much, much better though, so I was almost on the fence of thinking maybe we could even cancel his appointment, but I think I'm gonna go for it anyway because his eye gets irritated every so often, so I'd really like to um, have some, you know, plan for the future talks with the vet and make sure we really have a plan for how I can treat Sherlock's eye. <laughs> okay, so um, I need to do this on all of them. Probably 
probably somewhere around 5 p.m. Jeff yeah and if we give a review for the website Joe will give us something special like a free print <laughs> hello Matthias welcome to the stream yeah, the vet the vet's gonna be like yep he fat <laughs> Rodolfo hello no oh, thank you Devin that is so kind Devin, Joe, and I absolutely love the gift that you posted. That is so awesome. I'm just looking at what I'm doing for a second. I'll uh, I'll be back to check the comments shortly. Okay, just making sure I've got this where it needs to be. No, okay, it's not that one. It did it again. It keeps crashing. So I have to close the file and start over. Well, at least I don't have to restart Photoshop. <clears throat> Agreed. <laughs> He's just exceptionally friendly with gravity. Oh my God. And then Jeff says, Jeff has heard Sherlock's massive thud when he hits the ground. <laughs> there is a large thud. <laughs> oh my God. There is quite the, the thud when Sherlock jumps off of anything. It's, it's a whole thing. Okay, here we go. Well, these colors are really bothering me, so we're going to have to fix this, like, post-haste. All right. Yay. Okay, so now there is a spot in her hair here that is not supposed to be white. There's a spot here. Anyway, I do need to focus on her hair, and that will be next. Aw, that's so sweet, Devin. Thank you. <laughs> All right, we're almost done here. Wait, I'm gonna do right here. Unfortunately, I have to do them all. So here, I'm just gonna do the center line. That probably would have been wise for me to do all around. Then I wouldn't have had to give myself extra work. Shit. Ooh, so I got caught up. I finished WandaVision and I watched through Loki and through the Falcon and the Winter Soldier over the last two days or something. <laughs> I can really watch through shows. And now I'm watching through all the making of all the various shows. And then I think... I'm going to just start at the beginning of Marvel movies and work my way through all of them. I can't decide if I should do them story-wise, like go through all the Captain America ones, all the Iron Man ones, or if I should do them in actual chronological making of order. I'm open to suggestions. Oh, yay. Thank you, Mike Pershing. I hope I said your last name correctly, and that was very squeaky. I apologize. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you for hanging out for a while. I'm so glad you found something informative. That's awesome. And see you next time. No, it is not going to be in pastels, Steph. This is going to be a night scene. Right now I'm working on the flats. Don't pay attention to the colors. 
go in chronological order. <laughs> I think they did a good job on Scarlet Witch's costume. Long overdue, they did. <laughs> oh, yay. Thank you, What the Fan Art. Okay, so I'm getting a few votes for chronological order. Am I going to get myself, like, really mad confused, though, if I do that? I mean, of course, I've already seen all the movies before, so it should be fine. It looks like I may have forgotten to do the next line. I did forget. All right, I'm going to need to fix that. So we're going to pull in this. Somehow I forgot to do the other... Ridge. It was. The Goblin Queen was a print. I can't remember when, and I think we did like a very limited run of them. It might have been like in one of my November sales. Like, I don't know if it was a specific print of the month. Look online for viewing order. Okay, Matthew, I will. Thank you guys for the suggestion. I will look online to see if there's a list. My God, you know, that's so stupid of me that I didn't think of that. And that, of course, there would be someone somewhere <laughs> or many people that would have made a, this is the way you should watch the Marvel movies. Oh my God. Watching it in chronological order makes more sense than actually watching all Captain first. Okay. I don't, I think I've seen all the Marvel movies, except I believe I may have missed one of the Captain Americas. I do like Marvel movies a ton, but I, I've not, like, hmm, I don't want to piss anyone off, but it, Captain America is definitely, like, my least of uh, interest in the Marvel Universe. Uh, so I think I may have missed one of the Captain America movies. I know. Bad Dawn, shame, ding, ding. Hello, Arbelto Alberto! <laughs> I really can't read today. I know. Don't say that to Brian Polito. I'll get myself in so much trouble. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. More of a Wolverine, you know. Any of the, at the end of the day, Captain America is just a little too goody two-shoes for me sometimes. Okay, Marvel viewing order. This is fascinating. I will totally do this. Kara, hello! <laughs> yeah, Edson, my husband has set up so many ca caches and stuff. I think, I don't know, this is like literally just today that Photoshop is doing this. And every so often, um, it happens where Photoshop will be a little bit glitchy. It might just be a new uh, plugin or a new update that's made it a little bit more crashy. Like, this is weird. I haven't seen this one before. Kara, I, I am so sorry. I've been meaning all day to respond to your text. So I put little hearts on them so at least you knew I read them. And then I had to run and take my kid to class. And I have been literally on the phone or running around ever since. I am so sorry. I heart you much. Hello, Daniel Cooper.
welcome to the stream. So I don't know what the problem might be. I've spent all my technical knowledge in the previous comment. <laughs> oh, you're awesome, Edson. Thank you. Kara, you're so sweet for having any understanding or patience with me. I will definitely be responding ASAP. What time is it here? It is 5.54 p.m. Oh, wow. My white balance is off. Hey, look, I'm human again. <laughs> I was going a little zombie mode, wasn't I? Hello again, everyone. <laughs> Oh, wow. That's very late slash early in the morning, Alberto. Do you need to go to sleep? Okay, so this is supposed to actually be brown right there. That is going to be purple. This is going to be brown. Closing that up. Boom. Oh, but you like to work at night. Oh, good. All right. I have become very bored with the um, coloring of all this. So I'm going to move on to uh, her hair for a little while. So one thing that I generally get when I'm working on um, character covers is the eyebrows are flatted and the, the lips are flatted. So I always get rid of those. So now I'm just going to do this. I don't want the eyebrows. Unfortunately, those need to stay flatted. So I'm going to leave those. Now let's see if there's anywhere that I meant for it to be skin. So as you guys know, Lady Death, her skin is ghostly white as well. So that's something I'll fix um, in a minute once I actually get to coloring. Lady Death, as you know, has white skin and white hair. So it's handy for me to have them as two separate colors so I can select them and work with them separately. but 
you know, I will be changing her skin tone to its proper color. So this is a break in her hair. I don't want that to be solid. This is a break in her hair as well. So like things like this are impossible for a person doing the flats to guess while they're working on it, you know? It did good here though. They figured that out. But here, hmm. Honestly, sometimes I don't even remember what I intended for it to be. <laughs> Absolutely, Edson. Thank you. It's a me cook tonight, so I will have to leave right on time today and rush down. No. Yeah, I am going to have to rush rush away to cook dinner. to dreams hello what's for dinner we had tacos in the Matthew household nice I um will be will be having spaghetti uh alberto i already saw all of those ones i'm just i want to re-watch all the marvel movies so i was just discussing with everyone what um what order I should watch them in. But I have seen them all except for maybe one of the Captain Americas. I feel like such an idiot. I could have done just the centerpiece on all of these, and then they would be flatted. I wouldn't have to make each one a separate color. I am definitely feeling quite stupid right now. Again, please don't anybody think these are the colors that I plan on making anything. They are not. This is just to work on selections. So I am just fixing up the flats and then I will go in and change the colors and start thinking about color schemes. So we are not there yet.
Right, Jean, I'm working on the flat. So that is preparing my um, art for digital colors. So that's where we're at right now. Did I miss? Right there. Oh, thank you so much, Rob. Yay, I'm glad you like it. Okay, I'm going to save that real quick. So this is unfortunate because I'm a moron and I should have flatted the center one and this would have saved me so much work. So I apologize for the additional nuisance of having to see me do another layer. I could have just flatted the center piece of this and I would be done right now. Shit. We'll go quick.
almost done. All right, so now I'm gonna duplicate this and I'm going to name it colors and we're gonna actually start picking the colors. Hello, Jamie. Oh, I'm glad to hear the show was lots of fun. Yay. I'm sad to have missed it. Uh, colors. All right. Please don't judge the flats. I am now done with the flats and I will work on the color choices. Uh, then you zoom in a few pickle. Interesting, um, Edson. I'm not sure I follow, but I'll try to go back and reread it in a bit. That's so awesome to hear, Jamie. <laughs> I'm so glad you had a good time. Okay, so now I'm going to start getting the colors of the wall in. Um, I definitely want to go with like a desaturated brick tone. Let's go a little bit more orange, yellow with it. Desaturated a little bit more. Now I do want this to be a night scene. That was really in the color notes, was to go for a night, that looks a little too yellow, uh, to go for a night scene in a cathedral. So those are the colors that I'm going for right now. The San Francho, hey, is that one, that one's not till next year though, right, Jamie? Okay, now I'm just going to go a little bit darker and seemingly get rid of all the work I just did. But because I have it on a flats layer, I can make all of these one color now and it's not going to matter because I have them separated where I need them to be. Plus they bought out Denver too. That is so awesome, Jamie. Yay! Arnav, hello! Yes, I think that this is supposed to have a pretty um, intense goth vibe. Not really her outfit so much, just the whole look of this situation. So I'm probably going to change the wall color a little bit. It looks a little too yellow. It was nice to have Canadians in the US. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Except coming back into Canada is a real pain, so I need to figure that out. Hello, Red Panda 4. Thank you so much for the raid. Really appreciate it. Please feel free to share your links so that we can see more about you. Yeah, Jamie, I'm really looking forward to going. I'm signed up. I should find out if I'm going to Emerald City and or C2E2 this week, the end of this week, something like that. They're going to write everybody on the 19th, I think. But I'm looking forward to seeing you at Fan Expo Canada if I get approved. I found out we had to get re-approved. 
I'm just getting my Twitch channel on. Yay, see you later, Jamie. Thank you for stopping in. Okay, gonna look, go to my creator dashboard. All right, I wanna go see Red Panda 4's page. Take a look at your work. I'm going to give you a follow. Very cool. I love your style. It's amazing. It is not awful. Well, I went to your page and I'm looking at your your stuff. So all the sketches on the main um, page, all those sketches are so cool of all the foxes and stuff. And then you're working on, um, you've got really good backgrounds. I cannot draw backgrounds to save my life. Okay, I'm going back into Photoshop to keep working. They're red pandas. Well, they are amazing and adorable. I love them. Oh, you didn't do the pandas? Well, um, they are super cute, but then your, um, yeah, your backgrounds are awesome. I'm not on your page. Okay. I mean, I clicked on Twitch. Red Panda 4. So I went to your account. And yes, I am on your page and I'm seeing the recent broadcasts and you have backgrounds and they're good. <laughs> I don't know. I, I struggle with backgrounds. I know how difficult they are. They are good. Yeah, uh, Fan Expo Canada is still pending. I haven't heard back if I'm approved for the show or not, honestly. We'll see. Okay, so I want slightly darker... I want a slightly darker background for the walls. It's a little too much right now. So I'm going to fix that. So a little bit darker and maybe even a little bit less saturated. Let's try this. I'm, I'm leaning towards perhaps wanting to have a sort of blue cast to all the cool shadows and stuff, and then having, you know, the warm candlelight really illuminating. So um, I will, uh, I'm going to explore that and do my best.
So I'm trying to decide if I want gold and rubies. I do so like the ruby color and I'm very fussy about reds. So these reds are getting changed. Now I want to do some blue colors for the stained glass windows. Let's see about something like that. Also a nice dark tone behind Lady Death will help her really pop out as well. Okay, and then I want very gold, gold color for this, ew, that's kind of gross, here we go. All right, now we can liberate ourselves from this horrific orange. Might do like a lighter. Do I want a lighter blue on here? Felicia, hello, welcome to the stream. Yeah, I've missed a few spots. You're right, Devin. Hmm. This, come on. This should be blue. Okay, for now, just for shits and giggles, I'm going to make her outfit black. Okay, so we've got that in. This is for a Lady Death um, coffin, not well, it's for Coffin Comics, obviously, but it's for the Sworn Fest 2022 exclusive. So this one's actually not going to be part of the Kickstarter, as far as I know. 
Uh, what I've been informed is that this one is going to be for the um, for an exclusive, which is super exciting. Now, obviously, this is a very heavy color right now as far as her outfit is concerned and as far as her um, uh, sheer. This is supposed to be a sheer cloth situation. So it, it doesn't work right now, but it should soon because, you know, I'll make it more sheer. I'm probably honestly going to color her skin yeah, I should color her skin without any of these pieces on it. And I will then place the stones and all of those colored separately so that I can take this and with the dress version, I'll have her skin colored with nothing in the way, as it were. So actually, that's probably what I should do, is get rid of all of these flats and just color her and her hair. So, I'm gonna steal from myself, and I'm gonna get one of my other Lady Death covers because I can then swatch her skin. I would say probably the closest one is the other one that I did with you guys last time. Finals. So you guys can see it again. Low res. I cannot do the alternate version, but I can show you this one since I do have permission to live stream it. So that was a while ago. But I can steal the tone of her skin. <laughs> steal from myself. I'm going to choose a mid-tone color somewhere. Yeah, I like that. I know, this looks a little ridiculous right now. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and fill all of this in. family and Sherlock everybody's doing well thank you all right so for now I'm just gonna do this so that I can get her skin color in and prepare her overall shading so I'm actually just gonna save this out in just a minute
All right. Woohoo! <laughs> Looks really rough, doesn't it? Okay, and now I'm gonna take her hair, make it a little bit darker as well. There we go. <laughs> So I need to now start getting in some of the lighting, darkening out a bunch of this because I don't want it to be really bright. It's the candlelight that's going to be illuminating her. And then, of course, some light from, I don't know, we'll pretend there's some ceiling light somewhere far, far away. But on the overall, the cathedral look is what I'm trying to maintain here. And I don't think cathedrals are well known for being well lit so it's not going to be a super bright scene by any means soul hello she's gonna be wearing overalls what so this is where we're at right now the crown shape and everything stays the same between the two the two versions I just have a dress on the other version um, so I will be um, just placing the dress on top. I prefer regular hands-on coloring, personally. Okay, so I'm just gonna save myself one more version of that. And I'm gonna start working on her skin. So I'm gonna have a light source that's kind of from the center, facing downwards on her, and then she's gonna be rim lit from the behind, really, because the candlesticks are behind her. So they'll be illuminating kind of the side of her body, and then she will have some nice flattering light coming down kind of like this on her, straight on, I think. Um, so that's kind of what I'm going for. So she'll have some shadows, but they'll be from an upward, well, downward facing light from above her head. So that's kind of where my head is at with that right now. I'm just going to go ahead and select her whole body. And that means I need to go through and select all the areas that are hair. Mm. I've missed a few spots. Okay, so now I'm going to select it all. Nope, still missed a few spots.
Okay, so I set these up for myself so I can quick grab things. So this is Kobe Skin QG. So these are my quick grabs. And I just turn that off and move it way down here. Is my hair um, the color I want it? Not quite, but you know, for now I need to leave my hair because it's gonna get extremely damaged. So I'm just taking a pause on my bleach. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to an airbrush. Now, here's where I'm gonna start setting up some of the lighting. That doesn't necessarily mean that what I choose to do right now is gonna remain, but I'm gonna try something and just do a, a layer on the top and start you know, putting in shadows and highlights just to see how it looks. Do we like it? Uh, does this work? So I'm gonna try that. Okay, yeah, I prefer that color, so I'm just gonna un yeah. So again, this is just me testing out my lighting plan to see how this is gonna work. It's dark out, how much light will be getting in the stained glass? Um, yeah, we, I'm just going to need to try things out and see how we like it. And of course the light goes into the candles. These are all things I'm doing on a separate layer just to see how, how it looks. I will, of course, do this correctly soon but I'm doing a sort of rough test. Say there's some light that's kind of somewhat casting onto her in some way. So that of course is way more than I need. So I'm gonna undo some of that. Okay, maybe something sort of like that. And then let's see what the rim lights would look like.
All right, so observation number one, the, the orange glow from the candle looks much better on the darker side because it looks like I don't have the, uh, the coloring perfectly even as far as which side is darker or lighter. So it looks much better on the darker side. So what that tells me is I should make the, the rest of the piece pretty dark. So like I should darken up the background even more than I have it now because I think it looks much better with the um, the gold candlelight against that darker colder background looks way better so I'm gonna darken it up with some more navy blue over here And what's the what's going to really help with this too is all the like jewels and stones that I plan on having on her skin and on her you know all these little stones that she's got on her belt and all of that that will really stand out um, nicely against this sort of darker darker moodier piece I think so yeah, I'm kind of leaning towards going in this direction and the darker I make the background, the better it looks. Like that on the left-hand side looks much better than any of the highlights on the right-hand side, I think. So I'm gonna grab myself, whoops. Oh, I wish I hadn't lost that color. save myself some swatches now. I need to start doing that a bit more. There we go. All right, now I'm going to get myself a really dark navy brown that's, I mean, blue that's desaturated like so. Let's see if we like that one. Oh yeah, there's gonna be much sparkle going on. That is for sure. So now I'm just trying out, you know, where do I want shadows to be? Now see, that's too much shadow. Let's take some of that out. Lighten it up. Hello, Unnamed Knight. Welcome to the stream today. <laughs> oh, that's awesome, Mr. E. I love it. So 
this is really helping me kind of figure out some of the lighting um, and see if what I want to do is going to even work. And I, th I think it could. I really think that we might be heading in a direction that is possible. So that's kind of what I have in mind. And then I'm of course like stained glass windows, I've started really studying them because I actually haven't colored them before ever, I don't think. But I've really been looking up stained glass windows and trying to like figure them out. Okay, so it's not like, it's not clear glass for sure. It's got a lot of modeling to it. It doesn't even look like it's all even glass, you know? it. It definitely has that sort of handmade aesthetic to it and I think that is really cool. So I think that the stained glass windows are going to catch light from the candles in an interesting sort of way. Like there's going to be places where they, um, let's, let's just try it just for fun. There's going to be spots where it catches the light so much more in these interesting kind of patterns, you know, so like there will be places where it's gonna catch like that, not glowy. It's gonna have to be a lot sharper. So let's just say and of course it'll all be highlighted. Um, correctly, but I think in ways like this, it's going to catch the light from the candles and from whatever is going on and look like it's glowing itself. So it brings some visual interest and lighting onto these elements. But I have to be careful and make sure it looks like stained glass and not like, you know, the skull or the roses are 3D elements themselves. They need to look flat and it needs to look like the glass itself has texture to it. So I'm excited about that. It's going to be a new challenge and kind of interesting, but it should be good. And then, of course, the the gold here will catch in a few places, but for the most part, I want it all to have that candle look, candle light, um, cathedral situation. Hopefully that makes sense. And then these stones are going to be super glowing. All this stuff is going to be glowing like crazy. And then the bling should show up better too. Let's get some bling sparkle real quick to just get excited about this and not be worried. Let's try concept brushes. Let's try chipper three. And set it to color dodge. Anyway, we'll get ourselves some sparklies going on. Um, is the gray tone supposed to be Lady Death's skin tone? Right now, I just 
swatched some of the Lady Death skin tone from one of my other pieces. She is currently in flats. Right now all I'm doing is sketching out light sources because I'm just trying to figure out if I've got the right lighting sources. Is this kind of where I want to go? So that's all I'm doing at the moment. That's so cool, TV. Hello, Shauna. Welcome to the stream. Thank you. I suppose actually we wouldn't see all that much highlight over here because her hair would be covering it. So I'm gonna need to figure that out in a way that it actually looks right. All right, so I'm becoming happy with sort of the the general color scheme the overall look for the lighting so I'm just gonna save that really quickly so that I have it um, and then um, maybe I'll just actually grab myself just do a quick export quick export as JPEG there we go. So I'm just saving that so that I have a lighting reference. Now we will <laughs> work with this crazy ass situation. <laughs> so I might as well start with getting that background color going on. So we want everything a, a quite a bit darker. So I'm going to darken this up here. Yeah, wow, that's a lot darker. And even Lady Death's pale skin has shading. Yeah. Okay. Now let me turn this on again and see how dark the dark these would be. Alright. 
All right, it's coming together a little bit more. It's starting to look like this might be able to um, resemble a, you know, candlelit cathedral. <laughs> maybe, just maybe. I'm going to definitely start saving myself some quick selections so that I can get, you know, I can change the color of like the cathedral frames, like the window frames and the, um, the stained glass windows. I can select them all in one shot, stuff like that. I might not like the the rim around these side panels. I might not like it quite so light, but for now I'm gonna leave it and then we'll see. Okay, it's gonna start getting fun really soon. Yeah, I always start with uh, Lady Death skin almost a little bit darker and then I start putting in a lot of light. And with Lady Death, her skin is definitely tricky. You would almost think that um, it should be simpler because it's just white, but it really isn't. And it's got so, like, then it picks up ambient light so much more and stuff like that. So she's a tricky one and you'd want her to look like her skin is luminous still, you know? So it makes it, it makes it tricky and I really wanna do a good job with her skin. It's kind of my, my thing. Um, so I just color picked from this one and flats are always hideous and it takes a little while to get it, you know, where it looks good. I don't like live streaming this part of the process. It's kind of embarrassing for me, truth be told. But this is where we're at, so this is what we're going to do. All right. So now I really could start, I think I should even darken the... Um, the stained glass windows and then I need to start um, really getting the like shadowing so like the, the bottom of this is going to be a lot darker as and the top so it's almost gonna have like a vignette style thing going on with it of course I would like texture in the stone walls I think texture is really important for something like this see you later Matthew have a wonderful evening Flats always look bad, but that's part of the, the process. Yes, it really is. And then the way I do Lady Death's eyes is I actually make them really dark. They're a really, really dark gray. Sorry, I'm using, I'm lo I loaded my low res, so this is a very low resolution. But I make her eyes really dark and then just put really pop, bright, highlight pops on her eyes so that she looks alive even though her name is Lady Death. <laughs> so yeah I'm thinking I'm gonna make this one a real red and gold situation and then the the gown version I'm Right now, I'm leaning towards making it all have a pretty intense diamond bling thing going on. So that one will not be, uh, I don't think I'm gonna have her with a red crown. I mean, I may not even keep a red crown here either, but that's kind of where I'm going right now. This is sort of a real romantic 
cathedral gothy vibe situation for her here and then the other one she's just gonna be blinged the fuck out like diamond dress situation <laughs> tough to do but i i'm here for it all right so i want that yellow to have that beautiful soft glow to it it can't be that it can't skew green at all, and I don't want it to go really orange, so getting the right shade of candlelight glow is gonna be so important, to me anyway. <laughs> all right. I almost like it this dark as opposed to that dark. Yeah, we're gonna go, we're gonna go darker. We're gonna go like this. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's scary. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set myself up a quick selection that is literally the entire background. In my mind, the way that this piece is, is there's three levels to the background. There's Lady Death in the front, the mid-range, is going to be the candlesticks and then the back background is the um, cathedral wall and all of that so um, I may even at the very end take the whole cathedral wall part and blur it and then take the candles and blur them a little bit less but still blur them a bit and then Lady Death is the main focal point I'm kind of thinking that I want to do something sort of like that. Dr. Dark, hello, hello. Welcome to the stream. Thank you, Jin. Much appreciated. So this is my shading lighting sketch. So I just worked on this with you guys and it's kind of trying to get my mind around wh what exactly I plan on doing. So this is a shit show right now. It's just my rough sketch to plan out colors and lighting and all of that. Now, of course, I will start working on it, but having the lighting direction saves a lot of time. So. I'm starting to try to do a color sketch before I start really coloring. Otherwise, I can end up with quite, um, I can really waste a lot of my own time, <laughs> honestly, uh, just by indecision and not really being sure what to do. And then I decide I wanna change the light source and then my day is ruined. All right, guys, there is going to be too much information for you right now. <laughs> and I debate this so many times. Do I tell them that I just really need to pee or do I just sit here and <laughs> wiggle <laughs> and I need to pee and I'm not gonna last. So too much information, I will never say it again, but I need a momentary break. So we are gonna do a B, R, B. Most of the time I can make it, but I can't today. I know, I'm just sitting here like doing <laughs> boogie dance. <laughs> oh my God. All right, so I will be right back, my dear wonderful friends. <laughs> See you in a moment. <laughs> You don't know, you tell people you need to pee all the time. Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like then it's recorded forever and that's very embarrassing for me. <laughs> but I'll be right back.
I'm back. I'm standing up for a friend who felt awkward. You're the best. <laughs> ah. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Thank you for welcoming me back. You guys are awesome. <laughs> All right, I can erase the BRB now. <laughs> Thank you, Kara. You are so awesome. Okay, Woo! I'm confused about this one. And not confused, but I've never done this where I'm trying to do it in a few different layers like this. <laughs> I will, Mr. E. I'm always trying to be good and like not drink too much so that I don't have to be during the live stream. It's really terrible. <laughs> but, no, I mute it. You're the best, Kara. I love you. But I do want this to really work. Um, so I think I'm going to have to select every item and make it its own kind of like my little quick grabs so that I can, you know, work on shading the background, for instance, as a whole, as opposed to um, having to reselect all the time. So I'm going to do that for sure. Yes, that's so smart, Devin. Okay, we need a good code for that. <laughs> so at least some people know, and I don't have to come out and say it. It's so embarrassing. <laughs> just not trying to say that all the time all right so I'm gonna just do a quick wall selection in all this hair there's a lot of hair and beads that I have to work around so we're gonna get that We have the wall. Yes, we have the wall. Okay, so I'm going to do <laughs> okay, default shift F5, foreground color, yes. All right. So that's going to be wall. Now I will do all the frames. It's <laughs> a good one, Kara. Okay, control D. I'm going to do all the frames. And I do have all the frame levels on my flats layer. So this is just, you know, for when I'm working on everything in like unison here. Okay. Those, okay. So there's all the frames and then I'll do all the windows. And then we've got the background at least. Hello, Paul Gerald. I actually keep a pretty regular schedule. Um, so yeah, I, I sleep normal, normal time. <laughs> I need to go inspect the porcelain. 
Oh, that meal sounds so delicious. Have a good one, Hanu Soul. Thank you for stopping in. Thank you, Che. So excited to be working on this Lady Death piece. Um, please know right now I am in my color sketch and I'm setting everything up. So hopefully soon it will start taking shape. So this is kind of my color plan, as it were. Okay, Shift F5 foreground color this is going to be frames frames and then I'm going to do the stained glass now David Frank hello welcome to the stream <laughs> that one works for a dude mystery <laughs> Stained glass windows, they're all going to, everything in them I'm going to have selected because this is for when I want to work on it as a whole. Chicken heed, hello. David Frank, I can't remember if I said hi or not. I hope I did. <laughs> Shit. Much love back to you. Yes, Paul Gerald, right now I am working in Photoshop. Okay, so I've got those ones in and I think they're complete. making sure I caught everything. It looks like I did. Okay. The rose in the top one. Did I miss a rose in the top one? I don't think so. Let me do a quick. Oh, you're right. Who said that? TV, well done. Good catch, TV. Okay, frames. Let's just shift up five. Okay. And I'm going to name this Windows. There we go. I 
worked in it years ago, used to restore old photos. Oh, that's so awesome. I'm using Photoshop Creative Cloud, so I get the subscription, um, and so it updates all the time. I like your suggestion, Devin. I'm going to probably use that. <laughs> so now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to select from all of these layers. Or maybe I'm just going to duplicate them all and merge them, merge layers. So now I have the whole background. So now all I need to do is press control and click on that. And I have the whole background selected. That is going to make my life so much easier. Just the past weekend, I found my floppies for Photoshop 2.7. Oh my God, that's insane. Peter, hello, welcome to the stream. That's so crazy, Jason. Okay, so I'm gonna turn off those two layers so that I actually see what it is I'm doing. All right, and I wanna get all of this a little bit darker. Set this to normal. We're going to get a little bit bigger with the brush. That looks good. <laughs> My grandma had a sign on the bathroom. <laughs> Okay, I want the dark color to be blue. champagne bottle ready to smash against the site banner on the screen <laughs> so sweet what the fan art thank you so much for planning to be there tomorrow i really appreciate it i hope you have a wonderful evening see you later ted have a good evening as well thank you for hanging out All right, we've brought in the shadows. Now we're going to start bringing in some of the light. We'll call this shadows. And this is swatches. darker color going on in here. Now let's try putting some highlights. Let's do highlights. And start getting some texture in the wall. So um, unfortunately, for some reason, my uh, thing does not show up the um, the brush, the brushes that I'm looking at. So I have the Photoshop standard brushes that come 
with Photoshop. And then I have a few extra ones that I've gotten over the years. And um, they, you know, I'll have like mostly just random like cloud brushes, splatter brushes. For the most part, I really just use the basic brushes that are in Photoshop that you can download for free. Um, but then, you know, every so often it's nice to have a texture brush. So I'm going to try and see if I can find something um, that will work and look a little bit like, I don't know, concrete or something. Let's see how this one looks. I don't really think that, no. Well, it actually is pretty decent. Okay. Some shadows. What's the cloud brush I use? Um, let me see. I think it's just, I mean, I got the cloud pack from, you know, it's like Kyle's brush set or something like that. And I just use the clouds from there and I'll kind of use a few of them to get the look that I'm going for. If I'm trying to do mist or smoke or clouds or whatever. So it's, yeah, all of the, like Kyle's brushes that you can get on Photoshop CC. I just have all of them and then just use random ones. You're being amazing, Mr. E. Mo's Little, hello, welcome to the stream. Hmm. So this is an interesting brush. I can't say that I hate it, but I don't know if I love it. It's a little denser than what I want. So I'm going to try something else. rough scratch texture it's a little too let's i'm gonna put it up really bright so you guys can see it's a fun cr squ scratch texture but it's a little more something you would use for like hay as opposed to something for a wall so i'm gonna undo that Here we go. I'm going to try something. It's just a grunge brush that I happen to have. So that would probably make a decent texture. So we're going to try that. We're going to get some shadows in there and then um, some highlights. And so then it'll look like it's got a bit of both going on here. Let's see. Try to do a highlight color from up here. We're gonna I'm going a little bit more into the yellows so that we've got that um, sort of old stone wall look. So 
little bit too patterned, repeating pattern. So I'm going to undo a lot of this. I'm just selecting the wall right now. Ah, oh, this is going to save me so much time. Okay. I just want it to be subtle. I don't really want a ton because I might actually come in and put, you know, um, like hand paint in a few cracks or something. I actually had cracks drawn into the line art and then took them out because I felt like they were a little, like there was just already enough going on. I need to do some scattering on this brush. See if it can do that. Oh, scattering is already on. Crazy. I've just changed to a different grunge brush. I'm gonna go a little bit lighter here. Thirty minutes. Okay, thank you for letting me know, Keeman. So in some places, I'm gonna need to blur that out. It's just too repeating patterny. you Rob yay all right now I'm looking for something else I really like this one and I have a feeling I might like it more than the other one that I was using. So I'm going to actually I'm putting some shadows in there too now and then I'm going to go over it with just a regular brush and kind of um, blur a lot of this out because I don't like too much texture and I hate repeating patterns. So I'm gonna make sure that I get rid of all those. Okay, now we're just gonna pick a kind of an in the middle color and I'm gonna go back to the airbrush. I'm gonna set the hardness a little bit higher and I'm just gonna get rid of some of this. set the hardness even higher now. Oh, thank you, Edson. Welcome to Twitch.
That's a very good idea, Mr. E. I don't know, though. I'd feel a little, um, honestly, a little bit wrong about that since I didn't color that one. Now you're hearing me twice. <laughs> That's a lot of thinking for you. Oh my God, Rob. <laughs> I think though, ooh, I shouldn't have done that. Okay. I'm going to do a quick undo here. I think that, um, one thing that's going to be really cool now is I can go in and start illuminating the windows. So like the windows right now up in the top corners are covered in shadow. But if I go in and erase the shadows from those windows and I will be able to then um, illuminate them and make them look a little bit brighter and stuff. So I'm going to try that now. Let's try selecting the windows. All right. And I'm going to delete the shadows from the windows. Okay, so that's too much. But maybe I could do something where I erase into them. Definitely, Edson. <laughs> no one has proprietary rights. No, for sure. And I totally get that. But I, you know, there's a color and then there's a color scheme, you know. So that, um, I don't know, that's really close to home. Consensus reached, yes. <laughs> oh, interesting, Dr. Dark. Let me see if I, um, no, I don't want to do lightness, control L. All right, now, I might need to actually skew all of this a little bit more into the yellow because it's looking, it's almost looking more like a painted wall as opposed to a stone wall in, you know, a lady death situation. Let me see about... Let me see about adjusting the colors a little bit. Okay, I was trying hue and saturation, but now I'm going into color balance and I'm going to go a little bit more yellow.
Yeah, Edson, that that's something I have actually had in mind is possibly doing a little bit more of a uh, moon moonlight coming through. I al was almost thinking to draw a moon behind, but just in light uh, where the windows are so that it'll really illuminate like right behind her head or something like that. So I will be trying that. Good suggestion, Edson. Okay, well, you know, I don't think I did anything better here. So I'm going to I'm gonna keep working on it. And you know what, Mr. E, I'm not trying to shoot you down at all. It's a very good concept. Um, and that's kind of what I'm doing here. It's the same basic art note situation. So maybe, maybe I will. Um, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to definitely give it a give it a shot or at least go back and take a look at it. I, you know, it's been a minute since I've looked at that one. Okay. So, I think I need to start getting some shadows and highlights in from the frames. So, I'm going to select just the wall now. Oh, this is so amazing. So, I've got light sources coming from all around, basically. Um, but the, the catch is, okay, so I've got a light coming from like forward and above her. Um, let's say where her eyes are looking, but a little bit higher is where one light source is gonna be, at least this is what I'm thinking in my head. And then there's two light sources on either side slash behind her with the candles. Now, that's going to be casting a bunch of different shadows all over the place. So honestly, I'm going to take lighting and make it a guideline, not a rule. <laughs> if there's a shadow somewhere that you don't think it should be, well, then there's a light that you don't know about. Let's put it that way. <laughs> but the main thing with, with um, what shadows I cast from the frames themselves, I don't want it to in some way warp the wall or make it look rounded or something like that. So. Honestly, that's what I'm going to care about more than actually making the um, the lighting be correct. I just don't want it to fuck anything up. You're so awesome, Mr. E. Thank you. Tony for a peach. Can't wait to see the candles. Thank you, Tony. Well, I have my sketch, so I'll show you my color sketch. It'll be something kind of like that. Mark, hello, welcome to the stream. How are you doing? It's a hard balance with light. Sometimes I'd like to make images dark and give them mysterious hidden quality. But then with pinup style art, the key is seeing the figures. Yeah, it's a tricky one. So basically, Dr. Dark, what I've learned in my little bit of time being a colorist is frankly, don't worry about the lighting too much. What matters more than anything else is like you've said that the character looks good. And you can have a dark piece and then just illuminate the character because you essentially, to sound extremely narcissistic as an artist, fail, you're God when it comes to this piece. Bearing in mind that you make sure the publisher is happy and all of that sort of stuff, right? But Usually the lighting is not necessarily something you're going to get in the art note. That's for you to decide, right? And especially if you're creating something yourself, for yourself, you can do whatever the hell you want. So you can put a spotlight on the character. You can m pretend that there's a, a glow halo off the screen, <laughs> screen that is making your character illuminated. You can do whatever the fuck you want. So, you know, know the rules of lighting and then break them to make the character look good. That's my opinion. The rear end light, yes. <laughs> Why is Mark going to the corner? He did nothing. So I'm working on shadows now. We're going to get some pretty dark light going on. 
and I'm going to use a uh, my usual airbrush brush, but I'm going to take the hardness up a ton. That's awesome, Keeman. Just gonna redo that part a little bit. So I'm just putting some shadows underneath the the window frames. And like Devin has mentioned before, there is a very big possibility that the next time you see this piece on Thursday, it's gonna look completely different and I've gone in the opposite direction with my color scheme. It happens. Be prepared. I tend to do that. I like change my mind, decide on something different, get upset, throw it away, start over. It, it seems to be how I roll. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do the window frames now. We're going to start getting some highlights in there, some shadows in them, things like that. So for starters, I'm just going to do overall light on them. So there would be light. Of course, they're going to be super illuminated near the candle. They're going to be illuminated from whatever light source is kind of above her head. All of that. True dawn in true form. Yes, it's how we go. It's how we roll. happening? Why am I not seeing anything? Oh, there we go. I really feel like I've I've gone wrong in my coloring choices for the the wall. Business question: How do you print your prints? I actually let's take here in Calgary for instance. I um have a print shop that. This particular print shop was recommended to me from an artist that I know uh, locally. Um, before that, I was printing at another place, and what I did is I literally just called around to all the print houses, asked them what paper they had, asked them their pricing, you know, what what kind of quantities can they work in, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Did a couple test runs with them, like some proofs, and then went with that printer and I will do that frequently like you know every so often something will happen at a convention and your prints don't show up and you need to mad dash and get a new printer uh, right away <laughs> it like you know in case you're printing them locally or whatever so um, yeah what I do is I'll just call around to any local print places you can find them online you can find them listed you know, in the yellow pages, <laughs> stuff like that.
I kind of feel if I'm planning to do like the windows themselves are going to be a little bit illuminated from whatever's going on outside, I'm going to have, you know, a bright light or at least a highlight happening on the stone where it's closer to the window. I think that that would make sense to me. Um, okay. So much love for Dawn's print shop. Yay, thank you, Jason. So how do you ship them? Okay, well, when I first started, I shipped them myself. Um, and I had an Etsy store. Now I actually have a warehouse and fulfillment center in the US. So um, I'm not shipping from Canada anymore and I'm not shipping them myself. So I have two different situations. Yes, I have people. <laughs> Oh, wow. Thank you for letting me know, Philip. I didn't realize it was so close to dinner. So, um, let's go raid someone and then I will run for dinner. Thursday I have to like really haul ass and leave, so I probably won't raid on Thursday. But let's go raid someone today. I have about five minutes. I can hang around and talk with them. So let's do that. And I will keep working on this. So you guys were here for the very beginning. Hopefully it's not gonna look anything like this next time. Um, so I will be working on it over the next couple days. And then of course, tomorrow is the big, awesome launch of the Divinica website. So JP Roth and I will be live sometime tomorrow afternoon, probably at around the 5 or 6 p.m. time frame. Um, I'll post on in Boop Squad and maybe on my actual Facebook page as well um, to let you guys know when Joe and I are going to go live. We need to coordinate that with our kids and Sherlock has a doctor appointment tomorrow. <laughs> so Yes, it's a new Rothic site. It is the Divinica store. We've now put all things Divinica in one place, which is so exciting. Make, make sure to um, sign up to the email list on the Divinica store. So the email list is different from mine, different from JP Roth's email list. This is Divinica specific. So. If you want the coupons that are coming out tomorrow, you need to be signed up to the email list. Thank you so much, Philip, for putting that in there. You are amazing. All right, so let's get the raid going to go raid Lee Cozy. Is that what you said? Let's do that. Let's start a raid. Let's do, it's Cozy Art, right? K-H. S E yes cozy art okay we'll go raid him so start the raid right is there a countdown 
Oh, yes. 32 viewers. All right. I love you all. See you next time.